Greetings, greetings, greetings. Greetings to all my loved ones. Welcome back to another episode of Healing Wisdom with me, your favorite spiritual advisor, Empress Oracle. So today, I'm going to do a little something a little bit different for the Healing Wisdom. I'm sure you already saw the title, but I've been seeing a lot of ladies telling their abortion stories online and I just want to share mine not only my story but the karma that I feel as though I went through or the consequences I paid should I say after my abortion so get ready y'all okay so basically first and foremost let me start off by saying I don't me personally I don't believe in abortion although I had one at the time when I had it I felt as though I had no choice because I was a new mom, basically. I had my oldest daughter six days after I turned 17 and I was doing it on my own. I was thugging it out, basically. So I got involved with, I started dating when she was about two, three months old. I started dating this guy that I had went to high school with and he, we had class together and, you know, he tried to get at me my whole pregnancy. And I was like, chill, I'm pregnant, chill, chill. But, you know, he was cute and stuff. So we would just, uh, well, basically, he would just talk shit to me all day. And I used to just eat that shit up like, <laughs> you know. So um, I graduated from high school, you know, that same year. And it just so happened we had mutual friends. So one day, one night, you know, we was all just kicking it and we ended up kicking it at his house. And next thing I know, I was kicking it with legs open and then we was together, basically is what happened. Um, yeah, we were together after that. But, you know, he was childish and immature. So, you know, he wanted a girlfriend without saying his girlfriend, but really I was his girlfriend. And then he was like, okay, you're my girlfriend. And then, you know, and then after that, the games ensued. You know how those young relationships go. He played a lot of games and stuff. We were off and on. And uh he was he was he was a good stepdad to my oldest daughter. You know, we spent a lot of time together and everything. I don't remember what exactly caused us to, you know, break up. But I was chilling with my homeboys after we broke up and I don't even know what we were talking about, y'all. I don't even know what he was talking about. But it was one of my homeboys. It was one of my best friends at the time. All of a sudden, he was like, hey, when's the last time you had your period? Now, I don't even know what made him ask that. Okay? But I was like, damn, son, you right. You right, nigga. Nigga. So, you know, being the, the upstanding gentleman that my homeboy was, he was like, I bet I'm going to go steal your pregnancy test. So I was like, I bet. So he stole me a pregnancy test. He stole me a good one too. And we went back to his house because, you know, it was a whole bunch of I. Okay, for the record, you know, females and I, we, you know, I've, I've been associates with a lot of females. I've had very few close female friends. Females have a tendency not to like me because they man do, which is not my fault. So, you know, and I'm uh, originally I'm a home, I'm a, I said a homeboy. Originally I'm a tomboy too. So I just get along better with men. So, you know, I was chilling with the boys. So I took the test and would you look at that? I was pregnant. Ironically, my homeboy lived in the same neighborhood as my ex. So he was like, well, what are you gonna do? I was like, uh, nothing. I was, I was still in shock. And um, so we got in the car and we just so happened, I think to, now some stuff I'm leaving out because I don't remember because this was a long time ago because I'm, I'm this, this, this was about 20, 21 years ago, guys. So anyway, we're driving and we're to the front of the neighborhood and then he sees my ex. And of course, you know, my homeboy, as tactless as possible, is like, you about to be a daddy. <laughs> In front of everybody, awkward, right? So basically my ex and I, we got together and we were talking about it and he's asking me how I got pregnant like I like I am supposed to know. I was, I was just there to have a good time, okay? But anywho, you know, as I said before, I was a new mom. I already had a baby. And when, when he found out that I was pregnant, the first thing that came out of his mouth was, I don't want this baby. Now, mind you, my first baby daddy wasn't shit, right? When when, I, when he found out I was pregnant, he got scared and ran to the country, got with somebody else. So now here I am again, 
pregnant again. I didn't even know I was pregnant. I didn't feel pregnant or anything. If, listen, if my homeboy hadn't told me I was pregnant, I wouldn't know. And this, the first thing he says is he doesn't want the baby. Now, mind you, me and this dude spent 25-8 together all the time. Me, him, and my baby. So for him to say something like that, it really hurt me, especially because um, he came from money. So there was no need. It's not like he wouldn't have been able to take care of the child or anything. It was just for his own selfish and childish purposes. So me, I was very heartbroken. I really didn't know what to do then. I was like, oh shit, what am I going to do? I was still living home with my mom and my baby. And um, she had already kicked this out one time before. She already kicked this out. And she, I think she had a feeling that I was pregnant. I don't really know what gave it away because I really don't feel like I was showing any symptoms or anything. But she would always say to me, mm -hmm, if you're pregnant, you're going to have to get out of here. If you get pregnant, if you're pregnant, you and your child are going to have to go. Y'all going to be homeless. And so being with the fact that the guy told me straight up, no chaser, he was like, I don't want no baby. I was like, well, damn, I don't believe in abortion, but do I have this baby and end up homeless with two baby daddies who don't who, who don't want to do shit to help me or do I not have this baby and keep a roof over my head for myself and my child while I get my life together what do I do and basically at the time I felt as though I had no other choice because the guy told me he did not want me to have his child and that was one of the most hurtful things i think anybody's ever said to me to this day andre you hurt my feelings Mm-hmm. yeah nigga call you out but anyway besides that so i was like all right i'm gonna get an abortion or whatever and it was very hard for me it was very very hard for me because like i said i don't believe in abortion even to this day I, I do feel like it's pro-choice. I don't knock anybody who does it. Hell, I had one, but that was because I felt as though at the time I had no choice. You know, I did not want to be homeless, me and my baby. And I had a new baby. And I didn't, I just, I was young. So I went and I had the abortion. Basically, this, this motherfucker, he did not even, he, he, he gave me some of the money, of course. Yes, he did. He gave me some of the money, but um he did not take me or anything okay he was very unsympathetic and my dumb ass because at that time um i was just young you know what i mean so instead of dealing with that you know what i'm saying being a murderer instead of me dealing with that properly i held it all inside and i i also feel like i started lashing out i became very bitter after that i was like yo i'm a dog son I was dogging niggas for like a year, for real, until, and this is why I say karma tied into it, because when you do things that are against your belief, you know, you're going to get karma for that, whether it's you ending up in a mental prison, okay, with those thoughts just steadily just hounding you and beating you up, or something else happens to you because you knew better than to go against what your beliefs were. But you're going to have some type of karma. And for me, it was mental. And I internalized it. I held it all inside. Okay. I, I acted out a little bit. I was like, fuck niggas. They ain't shit. Right? And I just really, I just started beasting. I just kept my feelings because I kept getting my feelings hurt by these these dudes. You know what I'm saying? I'm letting I'm let you, you know what I'm saying? Skin out the pum pum rod. Y'all want to talk to me like this. You know, that shit wasn't cool. But I ended up, and I know that this was my karma for killing my child because I should have been strong enough. First of all, I should have I should have realized at the time that God always takes care of his own and I will be okay. At the time, I didn't realize that, but now I do because I've grown and I've been through other circumstances where I felt like I had no choice, but doing what I felt like I had no choice to do was against my morals, my values, my integrity, and what I wanted to do. And I finally found a way to put my foot down and I was like, fuck that, I'm not doing it. And God started taking care of me, okay? He opens doors for you, but you have to have that faith. I didn't have it at that time. So I ended up getting very emotionally scarred, very depressed. I was acting out and stuff. I was dogging niggas. I was like, niggas ain't shit, but hoes and tricks, all types of stuff, you know? But also too, 
after that, it haunted me for years, for years and years and years. It haunted me. I broke up with that dude. I moved on. I ended up getting married to a very um, crazy Caucasian man. And he tried to get me pregnant. And I just, I kept having miscarriages. I could not hold a child for shit. And every time that happened, I just felt like this was my punishment for, you know, not even trying to fight for my, my baby. Right? I just felt like this was my karma. I had like, what, two or three miscarriages for my ex-husband, which, you know, I felt like it was karma. But at now looking back, I feel as though that was a blessing because he definitely was one of the craziest motherfuckers I've ever been in my life. And God forbid, I'd have been connected to him for life, right? I already got one of those, okay? So then time went on and I ended up in another relationship and I got pregnant and I was like, okay, I didn't even know that I was pregnant, right? And somebody else was telling me I was pregnant again too. And I'm like, what the fuck? What the fuck? Okay, so I ended up being pregnant. So I was all happy and stuff because I was like, okay, finally, I'm, you know, I'll get to have another child or whatever. I was like, whew, no bitch. It was an ectopic pregnancy that almost killed me. I almost died, like no bullshit. I almost died. When I got, by the time I got to the hospital, they said if I'd have waited another hour, I would have bled to death. Okay, my clothes were soaked. That was another whole traumatic experience, another story, another time. But I ended up, of course, having to have a DNC because the baby was in my tubes. And basically after that, they was like, you know, you'll never be able to have children again. They was like, if you ever get pregnant again, it will, it will kill you. Not, not a probable, it will kill you. You'll never be able to have any more children again. And I was just like, oh my God, Jesus. Why? Why, Lord? Why me? But deep down, I knew why. I knew it was because, you know, I did not put my foot down for myself, my body. I had a choice and I let people take that choice from me, you know? And it was at that time that I realized that I had to stop beating myself up for something that I felt like I had no choice for at the time. I, what I did, I had to sit and have a talk with myself. I had to have a talk with God. And I had to say to myself, you know, just because you had an abortion does not mean that you are a bad person. Just because you had an abortion does not mean that you believe in abortion. At the time, you felt as though you had no other choice and you did what was best for yourself and your daughter's livelihood. I had to stop having that guilt. I had to stop beating myself up about it. I had to stop doing all those things. But most importantly, I had to repent because as I said, I was raised Christian. So, you know, I was raised with the belief that murder is a sin and I had just never apologized to God, I had never repented because if you feel guilty about something, if you do something that you know is against your beliefs, you need to repent. That's the way to get your forgiveness. Yeah, you still gonna have to get karma for whatever the fuck you do that you know wasn't right, but you have to repent. And let me tell you something, I got down on my knees one night because it had been haunting me for so long. I think I held on to that burden of guilt for about 10 years. No bullshit, no bullshit, 10 years. I promise you, a lot of a lot of my drinking that I did, a lot of self-destructive things that I did was because I was harboring guilt because of so many things that happened to me and most of them were things that were out of my control at the time. Right? I had to get on my knees, I had to pray, I had to I had to forgive myself first of all. I had to forgive myself because all I was doing was just destroying myself with guilt. So I had to forgive myself. I had to pray and ask for God's forgiveness. And then I had to feel as though God forgave me. I had to feel his love again. I had to feel his forgiveness. I had to feel source. I had to feel universe. I had to feel the divine, my angels and guides, okay? I had to feel that love that I didn't feel in myself, that I didn't feel from my family members, that I didn't feel from the guy that I was busting it wide open for that could just look at me like I wasn't shit and just, he didn't even think about that shit, okay? I had to forgive all of that because I was living below my value. I spent a lot of time living below my value. And I had to realize like, it's okay. 
Everything happens for a reason. And I had to trust and believe that one day God was going to bless me when it's time with my baby again. Because when I was pregnant, I just knew it was a little girl. I just knew it was a girl. I just knew. I just knew it was a girl. You know? And when I went to go to DSC, you know, to do a little ultrasound, I didn't want to see it. I didn't want to know. But basically, you know, once I prayed for forgiveness and stuff, I had to truly believe that I was forgiven. I had to put that, that stigma that I had placed over myself. I had to take that off. I had to hold my head up with pride and keep the fuck on pushing. And I just prayed that one day God would bless me with another child. And one day he did. Yes, it was through it was through a, a demon, but it's okay. My child is beautiful. And when I was pregnant with my baby, they told me she was not going to make it. Right? They said, yeah, you'll probably lose the baby. You're going to be high risk. X, Y, and Z. But let me tell you something. She's 12 years old. And one of the best things that ever happened to me. But that's my story. And I just wanted to share with everybody. Hopefully that story will help somebody to know that sometimes you do things, right? Sometimes you may be forced to get an abortion and that's not really what you believe in or what you want to do. But due to your circumstances, you feel as though you have no other choice. And I'm going to tell you, you know, the first step is forgiving yourself and ask God, spirit, source, whatever, for forgiveness. He always forgives his children, right? Don't ever forget. He knew what you was going to do before you did it. Spirit always knows your next move, right? That experience was supposed to teach you something. That's why it happened. So don't beat yourself up about it. I love you all. Don't forget to check out my Etsy shop for all your crystals and stuff. Y'all play too much. Empress Oracle Shop. Have a great day and be blessed. Bye, guys.